Measuring Earth's Tilt The Earth is tilted with respect to the Sun. This fact has been known for over 3,000 years. The angle, shown here, is about 23.5 degrees. In this video, I will show how we can actually measure it with help from the Internet and also without it the way the ancient astronomers did it. Who first discovered this tilt? Around 1100 BC, a Chinese astronomer named Cho Li made the first measurements, but I don't know what value he came up with. About 700 years later, Greek geographers like this man Onopetus, 450 BC, did make a measurement and obtained 24 degrees. And finally, Johannes Kepler in Germany around 1600 AD obtained a quite accurate value of 23.5 degrees. So, measuring the tilt of the Earth has a very long history. I need to first briefly review zones, solstices, and equinoxes. Earth is divided into well-known zones. The Tropic of Cancer, the Equator, the Tropic of Capricorn, and the Arctic and Antarctic Circles. The axis of Earth's rotation is shown by this line. At the Tropic of Cancer, the Sun is directly overhead only once a year during the summer solstice, June 21st. At the equator, the Sun is directly overhead twice at the spring and autumn equinoxes, March 21st and September 22nd. At the Tropic of Capricorn, the Sun is directly overhead only once a year on the winter solstice, December 21st. We need to be able to measure the angle the Sun makes with respect to Earth, particularly at the solstices and the equinoxes. This is easily done with an apparatus like this, a dowel stuck into a piece of flat wood. In sunlight, the dowel casts a shadow. The shadow and dowel form a triangle like this, and this angle, called the angle of incidence, is the angle we want to determine. This is the angle that the sun makes with respect to Earth. By measuring the lengths of the shadow and dowel, and applying basic trigonometry, we can calculate this angle and so eventually determine the Earth's tilt. There are three methods we can use, and any one of them can be used to obtain the tilt angle. In method one, a measurement is made at the summer or winter solstice. You then look up your latitude from the internet and then complete the calculation. This can be done in one day. If you want to avoid modern technology and do it like the ancient astronomers did, then method two requires one measurement at the summer solstice or the winter solstice, and one more at the autumn or spring equinox. This will require three months, since a solstice and an equinox are three months apart. A third method is to make one measurement at the summer solstice and then another at the winter solstice, or in reverse order. This method will require six months since the solstices are six months apart. I'll now continue with method one. Here is the apparatus consisting of a dowel stuck into a wooden base. Ignore this hole, which was for a larger dowel. I decided a thinner dowel might be more accurate. Here is the sun producing the shadow. The length of the dowel was measured at 15 and a quarter inches and the length of the shadow was 5 and 5 eighths inches or 5.625 inches. And of course measurements can also be made in centimeters. The information needed was that summer solstice was on June 21st at solar noon, not the regular noon of 12 o'clock. Solar noon was found by consulting the internet and found to occur at 1.19 p.m. daylight savings time. At this time the shadow is the shortest, which is what we want. We also need the latitude of Thornhill. I obtained it from the internet. Here it is at 43.808 degrees north. And here it is recorded. Now we will draw an imaginary line from the shadow to the top of the dowel forming a triangle. This angle of incidence I will call ISS for angle of incidence at the summer solstice. It will be calculated using trigonometry from the lengths of the shadow and the dowel. 
Do you remember some high school trigonometry? Especially that memory device, Sokotoa. The S, C, and T are sine, cosine, and tangent. OH is opposite over hypotenuse. AH is adjacent over hypotenuse. And OH, I mean OA, the one we want for tangent, is opposite over adjacent. So we can write tangent of ISS is opposite over adjacent, which is shadow length over dowel length, and we get decimal 36885 as the tangent of angle ISS. To get the actual angle, we apply the inverse of tan, which on a calculator is often shown like this. So angle ISS is 20 decimal 2466 degrees, the angle of incidence at the summer solstice. The tilt angle is L minus ISS, or latitude minus angle of incidence at the summer solstice, which is 23.56 degrees of tilt. The current or accepted value is 23.44, so the agreement is quite good. The percent error is decimal 51%, which I think is an excellent result using such simple equipment. I need to point out that at the autumn equinox, which is next, the angle of incidence will be labeled IAE like this, and at the winter solstice it will be labeled IWS like this. They are all the same angle that the Earth makes with the Sun. I'm just identifying them by when they occur. And by the way, my location in Thornhill is Ontario, Canada. Method 2. At the autumn or spring equinox, we can measure the latitude of our location as well as the Earth's tilt. Let's first see how to determine our latitude experimentally as opposed to looking it up on the internet. Here is the information obtained on the day of the autumn equinox, September 23, 2019. The dowel length is still 15 and a quarter inches, but the shadow is now longer than it was at the summer solstice at 14.49 inches. Here is the angle of incidence at the autumn equinox, IAE. Entering the measurements, tangent, of IAE is decimal 95016, and the angle of incidence at the autumn equinox is 43.536 degrees. This measurement at the autumn equinox gives us our latitude. So you can measure the latitude of your location on the day of the autumn or spring equinox anywhere north of the equator. The actual latitude at my location in Thornhill is 43.808 degrees, which is off by decimal 62%. Not a bad result. The Earth's tilt is again found by subtracting the angle of incidence from the latitude. This gives us 23.289 degrees compared to 23.44 an error of decimal 64%. Measurement using winter and summer solstices method 3. Here's the information obtained for the winter solstice. Solar noon is now 1215 because it's Eastern Standard Time. The dowel length is still 15 and a quarter inches, but the shadow is much longer now at 37 and three quarter inches. Here is our triangle showing the angle of incidence, IWS, for the winter solstice. The tangent of IWS is shown now as before, and after entering the measurements, we get the angle of incidence at the winter solstice as 68 degrees. Here is the tilt formula, whose origin is explained later. In words, it says that the tilt of the axis is one half the difference between the angle of incidence at the winter and summer solstices. 
we enter the values 68 from the winter solstice and 20.247 rounded off from the summer solstice from the previous slide then divide by two and we get a tilt of 23.88 degrees compared to 23.44 it shows an error of 1.87 percent so these then are the three ways to measure the tilt of earth's axis here's a summary of my results for 2019 the average of 23.58 degrees is pretty close to the accepted value what i find appealing about this is that with just one stick anyone can determine the tilt of the earth the fact that this was done over 3,000 years ago is a testament to the power of human imagination and ingenuity that, that is not just reserved for modern times. The rest of this video shows how the formulas can be derived. This knowledge is not required for you to be able to carry out the measurements and obtain tilt values. So this next section can be skipped if you choose. I'll now continue with this second part. Part 2. First a comment about latitude. Latitude refers to the distance away from the equator and is shown as the familiar parallel lines like these on the globe. The Greek astronomer Eratosthenes was the first to introduce this concept of latitude. He is best known for calculating the circumference of the earth, but he also calculated its tilt quite accurately. But it took until around 1500 AD before lines of latitude were shown on maps. Here is the first formula we use to find the tilt at the summer solstice. Here is Earth in a clean diagrammatic form. Here is the North Pole at the Earth's rotational axis. This angle is tilted away from the perpendicular by the tilt angle T. Now, summer solstice is June 21st, 2019, and here is a sunbeam passing through the Tropic of Cancer. This blue line from the center of the Earth is drawn to our location in Thornhill. Our latitude line would be shown like this. The number of degrees this latitude line is, north of the equator, is given by this angle from the equator to the blue line. We'll label it L for latitude. I'll remove our latitude line now to keep the diagram clean. At this point we put up a pole whose shadow will be measured. Here are other sunbeams that will cast a shadow of the pole. Of course this is way off scale but is drawn like this to better show the angles to be measured. This angle of incidence we'll call ISS for summer solstice and will be calculated by measuring the lengths of the pole and the shadow as shown in the first section. Now you may remember from geometry that when a line, the blue one here, crosses two parallel lines, the upper and lower yellow lines, that certain angles are equal to each other. In this case, the angles formed by this Z are equal. So I can say this top angle ISS is equal to angle ISS below. At this point, knowing angle ISS, I just need to find out the latitude for Thornhill and can then complete the calculation for the tilt from the formula T equals L minus ISS. Here's how the formula is obtained. I will first add a remaining angle, X, to complete a 90 degree segment. Now, look at angles T, X, and ISS. Notice how they form 90 degrees. So we'll write up here T plus X plus ISS equals 90 degrees. Similarly, if we look at these two lines, we have 90 degrees made from angles X and L. So we will write X plus L equals 90 degrees. Now we will subtract the second line from the first. We're left with T plus ISS minus L equals zero, and rearranging to get T by itself, we get T equals L minus ISS. 
This is our formula that says tilt angle is found by taking the latitude angle and subtracting the angle of incidence at summer solstice. Next, we look at the background for measuring latitude as done in method two. At the autumn equinox on September 23rd, the sun will be directly overhead at every point along the equator. Here again is the direction to our location and the pole. This angle we'll call L for latitude. The measurement is done in the same way. The sunbeam will cast a longer shadow this time. The triangle can't be shown here because the diagram is way off scale. Applying the Z method again, we see that angle L at the bottom equals angle L at the top. Note that angle L latitude is also the angle of incidence IAE at the autumn equinox. As mentioned earlier in the video, you can measure your latitude anywhere in the northern hemisphere just by measuring the angle of incidence on the day of the autumn equinox or spring equinox. With this measurement of L and the value of ISS from the summer solstice, we have the two values needed for this formula. The point of this section is just to show why the angle of incidence at the equinox, autumn or spring, is the same as the latitude. If only the solstice angles are used as in method 3, we need to develop another formula which is different from the first formula used in method 1. Here is Earth again, this time tilting away from the Sun, making it winter in the northern hemisphere. Here is our angle of tilt, T. On December 21st at solar noon, the Sun will appear directly overhead at the Tropic of Capricorn. We draw a line to our location and erect the same pole again. This sunbeam will create a shadow now much longer than the one in June. And here is the angle of incidence that we'll label IWS for winter solstice. Applying the Z method again, we see that angle IWS at the top equals the angle at the bottom, so we can write IWS here. Now we know the angle from the equator to the line directed to our latitude location gives the latitude, so we'll call it L. Finally, we add angle X in order to complete a 90 degree segment. Let's look at this 90 degree angle. Notice how T, X, and L form 90 degrees. So we can write T plus X plus L equals 90 degrees. The second combination is X plus IWS, and they add up to 90 degrees. Now we'll subtract the second line from the first, and get T plus L minus IWS equals 0. Rearranging for T gives us T equals IWS minus L for the winter solstice. Now let's bring forward the formula for the summer solstice. Now add them together. And we get 2t equals IWS minus ISS. Divide by 2, and here is our final formula that involves measurements at the summer and winter solstices. Translating this to words, we're saying that the tilt of the axis is found by taking the angle of incidence on solar noon of the winter solstice, subtracting the same thing, angle of incidence on solar noon for the summer solstice, and dividing by 2. Looking at it in visual terms, here is the measurement at the winter solstice and again at the summer solstice. And finally, here's a neat word version of tilt. It is half the difference between the height of the sun at solar noon on the longest day of the year and the shortest day of the year. This concludes the video on the tilt of the earth.